You'll recall that during the first month of the pandemic, the U.S. economy took a major hit. The stock market plummeted. At least 10 million people lost their jobs. Major corporations like Goldman Sachs, General Motors, and American Airlines almost ran out of cash. In movie theaters, restaurants, shopping malls, and hotels all went dark. Now, two years later, some of those industries are still having trouble rebuilding. For more, I want to bring in Liz Hoffman. She's a finance reporter for The Wall Street Journal. Welcome, Liz. So tell us, how does the U.S. job market now compare to the height of the pandemic? So the U.S. lost more than 20 million jobs in the spring of 2020. Uh, about 90 percent of those have been recovered, and there are states, uh, Utah, Texas, Arizona, that are fully recovered from a job perspective. You know, but there are still, and I should say that the unemployment rate, about 3.8 percent, headed towards that 50-year low that, that we had before the pandemic hit, of about 3.5 percent. Um, but the labor market and the economy feel very weird. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, about 11 million job postings that companies are having trouble filling. Uh, certainly inflation is a real pocketbook issue, makes people quite nervous. And then you, you layer on um, the geopolitical effects of what's happening in Russia and the likely impact on gas prices. And the economy, for some reason, doesn't feel as good as the numbers suggest that it is. It, it does. It feels awful. And we hear that over and over from people. We feel it in our own pocketbooks as well. Tell us, what effect did the pandemic have on the current inflation problems that we're facing? And what's the prognosis for the American economy? Most economists would tell you that that the inflation we're seeing is a very predictable consequence of the pandemic and basically two years of restricted economic activity. Um, it doesn't make it any less unpleasant or uh, more comfortable. But basically what happened were sort of, they had a confluence of two events, which is that people uh, did not spend money for two years. And on the whole, though there was certainly a lot of economic hardship for many during the pandemic, on the whole, Americans emerged from it wealthier than they went in. They had two years, in some cases, of stimulus payments, of unemployment insurance, tax breaks, and then just not a lot of money to spend because there was nowhere to go. So you had this huge pent up uh, demand to buy things, to spend spend money, to, to take trips again, and it ran smack into uh, supply chain problems and demand constraint. And so you basically had a lot more money chasing a lot few, fewer goods, which is how you end up with inflation. And now, you know, we're in a place where the Federal Reserve is trying to pull the levers that it can pull. It's likely to raise interest rates next week and several times over the next year or so in an effort to kind of cool the jets a little bit, to, to put a damper on the economy a bit and make sure that it doesn't overheat and that we don't end up in this sort of wage price upward spiral. Well, I know as a parent, I certainly see the effects uh, in the grocery bills and every time we refill our gas tank. Uh, but there are also certain industries, Liz, that have been entirely crippled by the pandemic. Tell us what's really uh, been unable to recover and what are the growth industries for people who are, are looking perhaps for something better? Sure. I think you'd have to look at, at movie theaters. You know, the, the North American box office in 2019 was about $11 billion. It was about $4.5 billion last year. Um, you know, certainly some blockbusters we've seen, you know, do well. Batman had a huge opening weekend last weekend. Um, but the consensus is that those numbers are never coming back. And in part, you know, it, it, people had to adjust their behavior during the pandemic. And streaming was already on the rise before the coronavirus hit and people embraced it and really got used to to watching you know content on their couches and realized they didn't need to spend twenty dollars to go to a movie theater um if you're like me and, and live uh, in a city on, on the coast it's very expensive and so you know there's been a real shift in consumer behavior i don't think that's ever coming back uh you look at airlines which were obviously very hard hit during the pandemic um, about 2 million people flew yesterday in the U.S., flew through a TSA checkpoint. Um, that's almost double what it was a year ago, but it's still about 20 percent below what it was in 2019. So that has been slow to come back. But the flip side of that is that, you know, it's not clear that that these industries could handle 100 percent of, of demand coming back because they're so short staffed. So, you know, it's been a very bumpy balancing of demand and uh, and and labor to, to kind of get us out of the pandemic. You asked what is what is continuing to grow. Technology remains a growth sector. Um, warehousing and logistics remains a growth sector. Amazon, Target, these are, you know, retail huge hirers. But the challenge and the problem, the place you're seeing friction is matching those open jobs with people in the right places who frankly want them. 
you know, there was a, we've all heard about the great resignation, you know, more than 4 million people quit their job in January and the same in the months before that shows no signs of slowing. Um, people really took the pandemic to reevaluate what they want out of their lives. And that's why you're seeing uh, all these, all this friction in the economy and, and the labor market. And of course, working from home presents its own new set of challenges that we innovate from. Liz Hoffman, thank you. Thank you.